I'll cover you. So with the many tyrants that's been presented to us throughout the Resident Evil series, we continue to see the steady progression of these monsters, which eventually leads to the newest iteration that we see in Resident Evil 2 Remake, with Mr. X or his Super Tyrant transformation. But before we get to see this new version of the tyrant in RE2, let's take a look at the previous tyrants that came before him and seeing their many different versions. Anyways, what is it be guys, this is Hey Deva, and in this video we're going to be covering the many tyrants that we see in Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, and break down how they compare to the original versions and see the many iterations of these behemoths. But before we get started, Started. If you guys want to see a part 1 or 2 of the Evolution of the Tyrants video series, I'll leave a card to those videos on the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out. Alright, so starting off, we revisit the many areas and events that happened in the first couple of Resident Evil titles, but more importantly, we fight against the Tyrants in each one of them, which here in Umbrella Chronicles puts us players in a different perspective, letting us play from a first person point of view in a real shooter type of gameplay, as we slowly traverse through the many sections of the game and cover a quick synopsis of the events that happened in the original versions of the Resident Evil titles. Anyways, back to the tyrants, this game lets us fight these behemoths in almost the same sequence during the storyline in the respective Resident Evil games, where we first see the proto-tyrant near the Umbrella Secret Lab, making its entrance near the rubble, trying to ambush both Rebecca and Billy before they head down in the elevator. But with this sequence, we can already see the small changes that they made from the original version, which was that Rebecca was originally alone in this part of the game, after Billy was separated from her in the previous area. But of course this time it only makes sense to have both characters together since it's mostly a co-op type of game. Anyways overall, the whole fight sequence in this version of the Umbrella Chronicles was done fairly quickly, as we didn't get to see the typical boss health bar on the bottom portion of the screen, which indicates that we may fight this tyrant later on in the game, which actually happens when we control Albert Wesker, as he tries to make his escape from the Umbrella facility, or we fight it on the turntable car lift, seeing his exposed heart and spine, looking grotesque and terrifying as ever, which this battle plays in a very similar manner as the first time we fight him in this game but we get a quick sequence of attacks from this tyrant where we see his overall speed and the way he uses his claws. Which we can compare to the original version in Resident Evil Zero, where if we're hit by one of his slashes, it can cause our characters to be literally be thrown back by its attack, showing its brute force overall. In the end, the Umbrella Chronicles iteration of the Proto-Tyrant gives us a small reminder that this version of the monster is flawed, especially after we hear Wesker mention. It's brittle. The B.O.W. still needs a little more work. Alright, so moving on to the more refined version of the Tyrant in Resident Evil 1, as we see the same sequence of events before our first fight with him, where we see Wesker impaled by the monster that he was raving about to both Chris and Jill. As we watch this monster look very similar to the proto-tyrant, but lacks the exposed spine, where we see him also displays tremendous speed during his attacks. But it's the same as the proto-tyrant, we don't get the boss health bar on the bottom portion of the screen, because it will be later seen when we fight him again during our escape, where at this time, we see him do a variety of attacks, ranging from his regular slashes, to the way he lunges at our characters or to the way he leaps up in the air and slashes down on our protagonist. It's truly crazy to see how these monsters were engineered to be so ferocious, but at the same time retain some intelligence even after being infected with a T-Virus, which is only exemplified after we beat this tyrant, because the next monster we see is Nemesis. as we play as both Jill or Carlos, where we make our way towards the RPD station as we fight our way through the many monsters that lurk the city. But instead of having the iconic cutscene like we did from the original Resident Evil 3, where we see both Jill and Brad ambushed by Nemesis. Instead, we get a quick entrance from the tyrant as he breaks through the ceiling, making his debut here in Umbrella Chronicles. Stars. 
I'll be honest, I did like the way he sounded when he said stars, because there's been a consensus among RE fans that they didn't like the many versions of his voice acting, except for the original in RE3. Anyways, back to the point. We see Nemesis in his base form, wearing his trench coat limiter, walking slowly towards our characters, which I found interesting that they took this approach with this tar in this version of the game, because we know in the original Resident Evil 3 that he ran much faster than our characters, and was able to follow us from room to room, which was new to the RE series at the time. But I'd have to give it to Nemesis though in this version, that he's able to take a lot of damage, especially after being hit with a direct explosion next to him. Anyways, in Umbrella Chronicles, I was glad to see that they still implemented Nemesis using his rocket launcher, even if it was only for a short sequence in the RPD's main hall. But our last encounter with this monster was on the rooftop on the east side of the station, where we see him transform into his second mutation, where his trench coat limiter is removed, showcasing the many tentacles that surround his body, where now he's able to use them for his attacks against our characters. where we see him be able to do a variety of attacks, one in which he's able to plant those tentacles in the environment, seeing him make his way towards our character, and attack us in a frenzy-like manner. But also, he's able to grab a hold of us and drag us closer to him, which is a reference from his original version, where we see him drag our characters by the leg and flail us around like a ragdoll. Anyways, in the end, we don't get to see Nemesis mutate into his more grotesque version here in Umbrella Chronicles. Instead, we see him limp towards the railing and fall to his presumed death. Overall, so far I noticed that Umbrella Chronicles gives us Resident Evil fans a quick snippet of the tyrants that we face in the older Resident Evil titles, changing some sequences and events to cater to the rail shooter aspect of the gameplay of this title. But this game overall does a great job of adding many additional tyrants that we have yet to seen before, starting with a pair of Ivans, which is first seen when we see him near Sergei Vladimir, one of Umbrella's executives who has the genetic makeup to be a viable tyrant, who was cloned and was able to let Umbrella mass produce these monsters. Anyways, these Ivans overall look particularly different from the tyrants that we've seen so far, wearing a white trench coat limiter and those distinct bands over their eyes, acting as Sergei Vladimir's personal bodyguards, where we see him usually very close by him throughout the game, obeying his commands at will, which in the end leads our encounters with both of them towards the end of the game, where we see both tyrants tag team against Wesker, doing a variety of maneuvers, attacking in a synchronized manner, showcasing their overall versatility and speed, making moves simultaneously which was a fresh new take on the tyrants. but what's also great about these tyrants is their way of showing their superhuman ability, or we can see them jump high in the air trying to get Wesker. Overall, it's great to see the tyrants progression to this point in their development, being able to keep watch near Sergei, but also be used on the offensive, if needed. But if there was one thing I would've loved to see in the game, was that they turn into a super tyrant if they lose their trench coat limiter, which I'm pretty sure they have that ability. Anyways, moving on to the last tyrant in this video, which is the highly regarded Talos, or better known as the Tyrant Armored Lethal Organic System, which was supposed to be the ultimate bioweapon, taking all the great aspects of a tyrant, but also adding on top of that, giving this monster its own armor, its own weapon, and it's fully controlled by Umbrella's Red Queen computer system, where we even find files in the game that stated that this tyrant overall went through a lot of research, seeing it fight against soldiers, tanks, and even helicopters, which in the end had the Talos tyrant win against all of them. So when we finally confront this monster in Umbrella Chronicles, we see both Chris and Jill fight off the many attacks that this monster has, while at the same time showcasing its many cybernetic aspects, where during the battle, we see the monster slowly removed from its armor casing, where it reveals the typical tyrant appearance, a grey hulking behemoth with an enlarged arm. But after the ensuing battle, we see this monster mutate into something completely different from what we've seen from the previous tyrants. The T virus inside of its body will continue to mutate until even a god cannot control it.
Now having tentacles that can shoot laser beams, keeping itself above the ground by the large protrusion from his back, and looks nothing like the typical super tyrant that we've seen from the previous Resident Evil titles, with his main weakness only shown when we destroy all the other orb-like spots on his body, kinda reminding me of shooting those G-mutated eyeballs of William Birkin, then finally revealing its weak spot. In the end, with all the advancements and technology that was added to this tyrant, we would still fall against our heroes, possibly showing how flawed these monsters can be when over mutating. Anyways, who was your favorite tyrant in Umbrella Chronicles? Please let me know in the comments section down below. Also, I'm well aware of the tyrant that Ada faces in the game as well, but I'm planning on adding him to the breakdown of the tyrants in my next video, which also includes some monsters from Dark Side Chronicles and Ustanok, so stay tuned for that in the future. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the content, because if you guys did, please feel free to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget forget to hit that notification bell icon so you guys can be alerted when I upload a new video. Anyways, as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, signing out.